Hi, I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and I'd like to welcome you to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. Today on the program, Rabbi Schneider is going to help you discover God's divine order. In the beginning, God created order and functional purpose to his creation. And as we continue our study from the book of Romans, Rabbi Schneider reveals that man's denial of creation has opened us up to all sorts of sin and depravity. There's a lot of ground to cover today, but first, if you would like to take some notes on today's lesson, you can download Rabbi's study guide at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And now, here's Here is Rabbi from the beautiful mountains of Colorado. Paul began this letter, this epistle, by talking about the fact that God's wrath is upon mankind because mankind is not acknowledging that he is and they're not living under his lordship. Paul then went on to talk about the effects of this. Paul said, because mankind is not submitted to his sovereignty and to his lordship, God gave them over to degrading passions. And so just for review today, I'm reading verse 26. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. For their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way also, the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another, men with men, committing indecent acts. And what is happening today is that the church is falling away from this God-given standard of sexuality. You see, when God created mankind in his own image, the Lord said in the book of Bereshit, the book of Genesis, God created man in his own image, male and female, he created he them. And so God created male and female and that together they make up God's nature. Men are different than women and women are different than men. And obviously when we look at simple human anatomy, we can see that women are designed to be with men and men are designed to be with women. This is the natural order of creation. But the gay revisionist movement in the church today, which is sweeping over the world, with such strength and such speed, if you realize what was happening, you get knocked off your chair. Major denominations are splitting over this. What is happening today is there's a new theology in the church that is saying that what God meant here in the book of Romans, in the passage of scripture that I just read, is not that it's unnatural for a man to be with a man or a woman to be with a woman. That's not what God was condemning. What gay revisionist theology is teaching is that it's unnatural when a man or a woman is born with heterosexual feelings, but they go against their own feelings to engage in homosexual activity. And so what the new theology that's sweeping into the church is teaching is that the natural divine design in creation is not determined by the creator, who created it to be natural for men to be with women and women to be with men. But the new theology is teaching, no, it's not what's designed by the creator. It's what is natural to each person. So they say, for example, that if a man is born with feelings towards other men, that's what's natural to him. And since that's what's natural to him, because that's his earliest childhood memory of same-sex attraction, then there's nothing wrong with it. And they're saying the same thing about homosexuality with women, that if they're naturally drawn to other females, then that's okay because it's not unnatural. So they're defining it by the individual. But beloved, come on. Let's use our common sense here. That's not what the Word of God is teaching. What God is teaching is what he built into creation, not how we define it, but how he defines it, what he built into creation, the natural harmony between men and women that's to exist has been broken. And so he says once again, for this reason, in verse number 26, for this reason, God gave them over, mankind, to degrading 
passions. And then he speaks about and identifies this degrading passion manifesting in the realm of homosexual behavior amongst both men and women. So the result then of men having fallen from God, suppressing the truth, being unwilling to submit to his lordship and acknowledge him in all his ways and obey him, the result of that, Paul is teaching, is that God gave man over to degrading passions. And again, the degrading passion that he's stipulating here is homosexual activity. Let me simply say, beloved, homosexual behavior is wrong. I totally understand that There are people in this world and their earliest memories are same-sex attraction, and that feels what is natural to them. But beloved, once again, truth is not defined by the individual. Truth is defined by the creator. And I'm not wanting to single out homosexual behavior in the sense that I'm standing here as self-righteous. I'm just simply proclaiming the word of God. All of us are broken in some area, and whatever area that we're broken in, God is calling us to turn from that behavior and to repent and follow him. Now, I realize that for some that are in this lifestyle, they've tried to repent and just feel that it's something that can't be overcome and it feels so basic to their nature that they identify that behavior or that tendency as who they are in their identity. But remember, beloved ones, in Christ Jesus, old things can pass away and all things can become new. You see, the Lord loves all of us, you and me, me and you, right where we're at. But he loves us too much to leave us where we're at. And the same message that's true for someone involved in homosexual activity is true for all of mankind. We must repent. The adulterer, the person that's involved in all types of sexual activity outside of marriage must repent. The person that's married that's involved in illicit sexual activity must repent. The glutton that's addicted to food must repent. The person that's lying to get along with people must repent. And I could go on and on and on. We're all guilty before God. But because sexuality and the divine union between man and woman is so central to God's design, Paul brings this to the surface to show how broken the world is because of sin. And then Paul tells us, in addition to men's passions being defiled due to the brokenness of mankind, Paul goes on to tell us next that our minds are defiled. And so in the same way that people's passions are defiled, as is pointed out in verse number 26, so too the result of suppressing the truth, suppressing the Holy Spirit, is that mankind's minds have become defiled. So first Paul addresses humanity's passions as having gone astray. And now he says that our minds have gone astray. And so he says here in verse number 28, and just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind. So we're looking at both passions and the mind. And now Paul goes on to speak about what he's referring to. God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed. I mean, all you have to do, look at commercials today. Look at the way goods, material goods are being sold at commercials. Doesn't it show mankind's mind being defiled with unrighteousness? I mean, the old bait and switch technique of salesmen, they tell you that if you call them or whatever, they're gonna show you this, I won't even name the specific industry, but my wife and I just needed to make a purchase. There was an advertisement from a company about a particular product they were offering. And then we went to their storeroom where they supposedly were offering that product. They said they were all sold out. And then the salesman admitted to us that all that company's offices were sold out of that product. And it was just a bait and switch. This is what Paul is talking about. That mankind is filled with unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, gossip, slanders, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. I mean, gosh. I mean, I could go through each one of those things individually. We're not going to take the time on every single one, but simply to say that Mankind is right in his own eyes. 
We justify ourselves in our own eyes by comparing ourselves to the culture. But as far as God is concerned, man is corrupt. Think about the prophet Isaiah. I mean, he was a pillar in the earth in terms of his righteousness compared to other human beings. I'm talking about the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament. But when Isaiah saw God, when God revealed himself to Isaiah in Isaiah 6, Isaiah fell on his face and he said, woe is me for I am unclean and I live amongst an unclean people. He looked great when compared to the rest of humanity. But when it was compared to the purity of the Holy Spirit and the clear Holy Spirit's power, he saw how corrupt and evil not only he was, but the entire population full of wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife. And the ends justified the means mentality that governs our society today. The way we malign one another, malice. The way we go on talking about people, gossips. We can't even trust the news anymore. We just get a spin on almost everything we hear. We don't even know what's truth anymore. Just one side maligning the other side, twisting the facts, twisting the information, gossiping about each other, haters of God. You know, I got a text from somebody not long ago and they were talking about, you know, the importance of protecting the animals. I said, yes, praise God. And we need to protect the unborn children too. But I don't think they wanted to hear that. I mean, let's protect the animals, but, you know, let's give a woman the right to, you know, to abort the child. And I'm not trying to put any guilt on anybody here that has gone through that, but let's face it, beloved. I mean, that's not right. I mean, we don't even, that's a no-brainer, right? But that's what's going on in our society. Murderers, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil. We've got companies being started, and the whole purpose of the company is to manipulate people for money. Disobedient to parents. We have so much rebellion in society now between children and parents, and it's not all the children's fault. It comes from the brokenness of mankind, the broken homes, the brokenness of humanity. Insolent, arrogant. Everybody today walking around trying to be somebody they're not, to show their best face. Boastful, untrustworthy. How many trustworthy people do we know? How many people can you really trust? It's not something that is highly valued in our culture anymore. It's like, no, the ends justify the means. So tell a little white lie. Do what you have to do to make money. Say what you have to say to survive. Unloving, unmerciful. And he continues on in verse number 32. And this is just a description of humanity. Paul began his description of the gospel in chapter 1 by saying, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth. He said the gospel is the power of God into salvation to those that believe. And then he told us what we need to be saved from. We need to be saved from the wrath of God because of the unrighteousness of men. This is where the gospel starts. Do you understand what I'm saying? The gospel starts with us being delivered and cleansed and forgiven from sin and evil. But as I've been teaching, beloved, the gospel that's being taught today is oftentimes saying very much about sin, about our souls that needs to be cleansed from evil. The way we think, the way we perceive the world, the way we perceive ourselves, our selfishness, all these things. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men that are suppressing the truth. This is how the gospel begins. And Paul just got done with this long list of characteristics of evil at work within men's life. And I'm wanting to make the point that Paul said, if somebody comes to us preaching a different gospel, we should reject it. The gospel that Paul preached, beloved, is not that we're going to have our best life in this world. Rather, Paul said we should be prepared to suffer in this world for the sake of godliness. Paul's desire was to know Jesus in the book of Philippians in the power of his resurrection, listen now, and the fellowship of his sufferings. I mean, think about the apostles' lives. They were all martyred. 
It wasn't, the message that they were giving wasn't that your best life is now. The message that they gave is that we should deny worldly lust and live righteously because Jesus is coming back for you soon and he's gonna reward every man according to what he has done. So you see, beloved, Paul's gospel was a different gospel than the gospel that many of you are hearing today. And Paul told us, if any man comes and preaches a different gospel other than this, let him be accursed. So take stock of your life, what you're hearing, what you're listening to, what you're receiving into your soul. Study the Word of God for yourself. And then Paul goes on to say that those that practice this unrighteousness that he just described are deserving of death. And not only is it shameful that people are arrogantly living these ungodly lifestyles, denying there's a God, partying, you know, as if this life is all there is. He said, what's even worse is so many of the people that live this way, godless, they approve and encourage other people to live the same way. And I wish we could have a sit down right now and we could take some questions and dialogue a little bit and kick it all back and forth. It's a lot to take in. And by the way, speaking of the relationship between men and women, as we were referring to earlier today in the broadcast, I just want to give honor to my beloved wife, Cynthia, because you know what? She's like half of my soul. I mean, without her, there's no way I'd be standing in the Lord where I am right now. I mean, it's just an amazing transformation that we can have in each other's lives when we impart into our husband or into our wife. So I just want to say, Cynthia, we love you today. Thank you for being who you are and for the humble servant of God that you are and for the uh, beauty that you bring to the earth and to the church. Let me just pray for you, beloved. First of all, I want to pray for those that may be struggling with homosexuality today. I want you to know God loves you. Father, I pray for your deliverance of every soul, every dear beloved one that's reaching out to you right now that wants deliverance. Jesus, your arm is mighty to save. And you said, he that puts their hope in you will not be disappointed. Jesus, I proclaim your lordship in the church. We declare according to your word that you are able to save to the uttermost. So I pray that you'll pour forth your grace and your power and your mercy on these that are struggling today. And I pray for all of us today, Father, that we would be delivered from all sin to stand before you holy and righteous for all time in Jesus' name. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and to go deeper in your study of God's divine order, take a few minutes and explore all the resources and study tools that we have available online. You'll find us at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And, you know, it's Partner Month, and we're super excited to celebrate our monthly partners. And we took some time to connect with some of our current monthly partners and to interview them and ask them why they've partnered with us. And I'd like to share with you this special interview segment so you can hear what they have to say. I was channel surfing, looking for something, and I came upon Rabbi Schneider. It captured my attention instantly. Rabbi has this ability and way of taking these profound truths and making them simple. Rabbi is a genuine man of God, a true disciple. His teachings are so pointed. They are empowering and life-changing. I love partnering with Rabbi Schneider's overseas ministry, especially what they've done in Ukraine. What a blessing. When Rabbi goes across the globe, whether it's Israel or Africa or Cuba or Brazil, and I see these people, they're being saved knowing that someone is going forth and saving souls and and I'm a part of it. It's amazing that I can sit here in my hometown and be able to actually be counted a part of sending Rabbi forth. I'm not able to go into all the world. So being able to partner with Rabbi Schneider and discover the Jewish Jesus and send him all around the globe is such a blessing to my life. I believe that if the Lord touches your heart, you should support this ministry because it's God's word is getting out. 
Wow, that was so encouraging. We're so thankful for all of our monthly partners. And it just goes to show how your monthly gifts of any amount, they are changing the lives of our fellow listeners. And now to share a little bit more about partnering monthly, here is Rabbi. This is Partner Month at Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and I wanted to be clear about what we're trying to do. And I don't want to use the word trying, that's a weak word, what we are doing. The mission of this ministry is ushering in the Lord's return by reaching the remnant, His chosen ones. You see, Yeshua came specifically to reach those whom the Father had given Him. In John 10, when many were rejecting him, Yeshua said, you believe not because you're not my sheep. I know my sheep and my father has given them to me. In John 6, he said, all the father has given me will come to me. And he said, we will lose none. I want to ask you to become a monthly partner with this ministry so that we can fulfill God's mission and mandate of reaching his chosen ones and thus preparing the world for King Jesus's soon return. Will you become a monthly partner, beloved, today? If you're feeling led to partner with us today, then please get in touch with us right now. You'll find us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You can also send your monthly gifts in the mail when you write to us at Discovering the Jewish Jesus, P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan, 49228. Your generous monthly donations, they help us continue to share more about who Jesus, our Messiah, is as well as sharing the hope of his soon return with millions of people around the world. And once again, you'll find us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. As our way of saying thank you for your generous monthly gifts, we'll send you Rabbi's latest audio message of the month on CD or as a digital download. And for those who sign up as new monthly partners, we'll send you an authentic shofar handcrafted in Israel. And then if you're looking for more revelation today, be sure to connect with us on your favorite social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And then if you'd like to catch these daily messages just while you're on the go, make sure to subscribe to our daily podcast. Connecting with Discovering the Jewish Jesus has never been easier. And now with a special blessing to wrap up today's message, here is Rabbi Schneider once again. In the Old Testament book of Numbers, we find a blessing God speaks over his children through Moses and Aaron. It carries the idea of favor and expression. Open your heart to the Spirit and the Word today and receive Father's goodness into your life with confidence. Yahweh, 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance, and the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you, and shalom. Let our prayer team pray for you. We lift up every individual request before the Lord. Submit your prayer request or testimony at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. That's discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You can also connect with us on your social media outlets to stay up to date on the content you love. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and subscribe on YouTube. 
I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Join us next week when Rabbi Schneider continues our study on journeying through the book of Romans. That's coming up Monday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.